Do you find it hard to know when to eat and when to stop eating? Do you wish you could stop eating to the point of feeling overly full and even sick? Are you interested in practicing mindful and intuitive eating but you don't really know where to start? Then the intuitive eating hunger scale is the tool for you. It will help you reconnect with your hunger and fullness cues and eat more intuitively. So what is the intuitive eating hunger scale? It's a tool that is supposed to help you identify your levels of fullness and hunger. It helps you be more in tune with your body's signals and helps you self-regulate. The scale goes from one to 10, one being ravenous, 10 being achingly full, and five being a sort of neutral middle ground. I'm gonna pop it on the screen right here so you can kind of see what the different steps are. So when you're at a one, you're starving, you're ravenous, you feel empty, weak, dizzy, you have difficulty focusing, you have no energy, and then two and three, you're very hungry, you're ready to eat, you have those hunger cues. Number four, you start to feel a sense of hunger, you're beginning to feel hungry, but you're not yet into the one, two, three um, real hungry steps. Number five is comfortable, you're no, neither hungry nor full. Six, you're fully satisfied with your meal, you could eat a few more bites, but you are fine. And then seven and eight, you're full or stuffed, so you've, you're completely full or even a little bit too full. And then when you're at a nine or 10, it's really too much. You're uncomfortably or even achingly full. You're overstuffed. You've eaten too much. So feel free to print this or write it down so you can have all of these different elements and explanations for easy use. So how can you use the hunger and fullness scale? So before eating, take some time and focus your attention on your stomach. Can you feel some signs of hunger? Where would you position yourself on the scale? Ideally, you should start cooking or preparing your food or getting ready to eat around a four so that you can actually eat before reaching a one or two. If you eat an amount of food that's right for you, then you should start to reach level four around three to four hours after a meal, after a full meal, like not a snack. During your meal, take the time to pause after every few bites so that you can reassess your position on the scale. Make sure to eat slowly, to take the time to chew, and to put down your fork between every few bites, which are some of the steps of mindful eating. And I have a video on mindful eating if you're interested. And try to look out for the signs that are telling you that you're starting to get comfortably full. You should be finishing up your meal around a six or a seven, even if your plate isn't completely cleaned. And that's totally fine. You can save the food for later or just throw it out if you really know that you're not going to want it later on. And the more you listen to your hunger cues, the easier it'll be to serve yourself the correct portion size from the start. Except during the occasional Christmas dinner, you should always stop eating before reaching a nine or a 10. Those are really uncomfortable places to be in. Make sure that you are creating healthy and balanced plates for yourselves. I have a video to help you create a healthy plate if you're interested. Because if you start out with like your favorite food ever and or junk food or stuff like that, then it's going to be harder to be in tune with your hunger cues. Like I'm super in tune with my hunger cues, but give me pasta and I will just forget them completely. Of course, that doesn't mean that you should never eat this food again, obviously not. But just to start out with, it's easier if it's healthy foods that you enjoy, but that aren't like your ultimate favorite foods. You can try to write this process down, which will make it easier to look back on your progress and track your progress. And remember that it's going to be a little bit difficult at first and it's going to require some energy, but in the long run, it will become second nature and you'll do it without even thinking. What happens if I reach the extremes? As much as possible, it's important to try to start eating before reaching number one on the scale and to stop eating before reaching number 10 on the scale. However, no one is perfect and this might and most likely will happen to you. So here's how to cope. So if you're at a two or a one and still haven't eaten, at this point, you're going to be so starving that you could probably eat anything that will be in front of you. And that is not the best way to be in tune with your hunger and fullness cues. So I really suggest taking a small amount of food, maybe some nuts, maybe some fruit, 
some veggie sticks, whatever is whatever you have available, and that will help you get a little bit lower on the scale, maybe to a three. So then you can make more informed, more conscious, healthy food decisions, which are very difficult to do when you're starving. Now on the opposite side of the extreme, if you stop eating around a nine or a 10, this will likely happen for holiday dinners or at all you can eat buffets or restaurants or stuff like that. The first thing you need to do is to tell yourself that it is okay. You are not disgusting because you've overeaten, you are, haven't failed, all your efforts aren't in vain, all that negativity, no. If you're the type of person to feel food guilt after overeating, then check out the, the video I made about that right here or in the description. After the meal, all there is to do is to wait it out. The discomfort likely won't last that long. And also it's important to be extra in tune with your hunger cues after a huge meal. Maybe you're going to be hungry a little later than usual, or maybe you're going to want to eat a little bit less than usual, and that's totally normal and fine. And so you need to adapt to, to this, listen to these signals, and eat accordingly. And the wrong thing to do here would be to starve yourself in order to punish your body for overeating. So do I have to use this hunger scale all the time? Well, it's a good idea to use the hunger scale often so that checking in with yourself and learning your hunger and fullness cues becomes second nature. However, there will be instances where that is not possible. Say you aren't hungry at lunchtime, but you have a big meeting afterwards and the meeting won't end until five, so you won't be able to eat until then. Well, now the smart move would be to eat even if you aren't feeling hungry in order to honor your practical hunger. I also have memories of pushing myself to eat Eat, even if I didn't want to before dance recitals because I was stressed and did not feel hunger cues but I knew that I had to eat in order to have enough energy. Sometimes the scale just isn't the best solution and honoring your practical hunger is better so that's going to be up to you to be the judge of these situations. Again the more you practice dealing with this the easier it will be. So that's it for this video thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like it and subscribe and see you on my next one. Bye.